Joe here, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries. Welcome for our Sunday message. We're just about on time. Today's message, very simple. Helping others because we have victory over our problems. Huh, what is that? You know, Father God, let me pray. Father God, I hate to be rushed, but I feel rushed because I've got to be somewhere. Father God, I don't want to hold back. Your Holy Spirit from speaking. Please use me. Speak through me what you want to speak. I am your humble vessel, Father God. As flawed as imperfect as I am, Father God. I serve you. I welcome you. I thank you for using me. I pray in the name of Jesus that people hear what you have to say. Amen. Helping others because we have victory in our life. Okay. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures before we get into that. You know, um, you know, we don't have to go, it's a pretext here, we don't have to go through life's, life's struggles alone. And especially in the last couple of years, so many people feel even more alone than ever. Even Christians, children of God, that are heirs to everything God has. We're his citizens, we're his royal priesthood, and yet, yet we go through life for some time, for seasons, of just feeling alone. Sometimes helpless. You know, you meet very strong, deep believers. Nothing shakes them. But we don't, there's not, okay. Okay. I wish, we wish we, more of us were like that. We wish more, we pray that more children of God will be there. Not shaking so easily. So, I'm just going to read. Prophet Isaiah, thousands of years ago. Prophet Isaiah, God speaking to him. Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31. He says, have you ever heard? Have you ever, have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting Father. The creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust the Lord will find new strength. When you're feeling alone, when you're suffering in your troubles and the challenges of life on this earth, which is a very short time, eternity will not have challenges. As believers, we're in place in heaven, eternity forever. Millions and millions of years. No watch telling you you're late. No doctor's appointments. No tears because there's no garbage and there's no sin allowed into heaven. We're here short for a short time. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar, soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. This is God speaking. A thousand of years ago. It hasn't changed. This before he gave us Jesus on the cross for our sins. This before eternal life was given to all, all believers. This is before the Holy Spirit would move into all the children of God. This be even before everything else that we've been given to us. And, you know, I looked it up. Cause I forget some of these statistics. The grip of an eagle's paw, claw, whatever, is ten times stronger than a human hand. Now think about how powerful. It's a bird flying around out there. Ten times stronger than a human hand. Eagles are strong. And they knew that back then. And that's, that's, why, the, that's why God gave us grip. He created us. He created the eagle. And he's saying... You will have the strength of an eagle. You will soar like like an it's it's okay, Isaiah forty one. Next next page. Um don't be afraid. This is God. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up. This is the promise to all of us. 
Um, so now I'm going to get into the, today's message, okay? We're going to go to 2 Corinthians. I hope I have it marked. 2 Corinthians chapter, um, chapter 1, beginning. Okay. Sorry. I had it marked. I uh, lost it. Sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to read from verse 3 through 5. Apostle Paul speaks. The church in Corinth. And of course, the church was very heavily prosecuted. A lot of the scriptures, they, they mean lots of things. Now, this scripture is, is partly about you know, prosecution, but it's about life in general, what God does for us. Just listen. Apostle Paul speaking. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles. All of our troubles. So that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. Then he goes on, for the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. They were suffering, suffering greatly in serving the Lord. But verse 4, he comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. That's today's message. I've given it before. That's what God gave me for today, essentially. Christian. Hello. I saw you call last night. I, I am, I'm sorry. I will get, I'm going to get back to you tonight or tomorrow. I promise. That's Christian in the Philippines. My, my spiritual, my son in the Philippines. Um, as believers, this message is for everyone. If you're not a believer, you can become a believer instantly right now. Just give yourself to Jesus. It's not complicated. It's supernatural. It's powerful. You have to humble yourself. Major changes happen instantly. Just give yourself to Christ. My spiritual son... Christian in the Philippines and we, we've done street, have been there a couple years we've done street ministry and he has a heart, an evangelist heart to tell people about Jesus doesn't make it complicated, just go out there and, and, and with the love of Jesus just coming from you to people and speak the love of Jesus and the truth and they will be saved and God, God uses him in a mighty way so if you're not a believer and you want to understand this message um, just give yourself to Christ now. Just you know you've got garbage. If you think you're perfect and you have no sin, you never hurt anybody or did anything. I mean, Lord, you know you never lied. You never, you never broke any ten commandments. You, you never whatever. So just give yourself. If, just say you're sorry to God. I'm sorry. Believe, you don't believe in. A, I, I always say this. Very few people come into the kingdom believe in a whole lot. Come up with a little bit, and you come in, you, you humble yourself to God, knowing that there's a God. Believe it just a little bit that Jesus died for you, was resurrected from the dead. He died for your sins, and he's alive and coming back for us. If you believe that just a little tiny bit, like the faith of a mustard seed, you become, become a child of God. Ask Jesus to be your Lord right now. Jesus, be my Lord. And Jesus also said, not just as your Lord, not just being your Lord and your Savior, but he calls you brothers and sisters and friends. This message is about. Because once the Holy Spirit lives in you, because as soon as you gave your life to Christ right now, God's Spirit moved into you. The Holy Spirit gives you understanding of what's in here. So, 2 Corinthians. This message is about we go through stuff in life. Whether it's medical or sins, you know, and diseases, finances, relationships, the challenges of life can be immense. And sometimes the challenges of life seems like two weeks of your life or, or a month seems like five years. It seems like you're in there, it just seems like you never get out. 
And some challenges we have are simple to do for a long time. We have trouble conquering it. So the message today is God's there for you. you know, Hebrews chapter 5, Jesus was tempted the high priest to Jesus. Was tempted by all the sins we were tempted by, but he did not fail. But he understands us. You can go to him and go to his throne boldly. Go to him knowing that he'll help you. And you receive peace and mercy at that throne. What we receive from Jesus, we are to give to others. The comfort that we get from Jesus, we are to give to others. And we often don't forget that. We forget where we came from. We forget the sins that we've been delivered from. We sometimes forget the victories that God has given us. The victories over sin or pet sin we just can't get rid of. And then we get victory over it. And then we look at other people that have that same sin. And we look at them and judge them. And Apostle Paul is saying here, God is saying here, that we should comfort them the way that we've been comforted. And the whole point of today's message is that every one of us has had certain victories against things in our life. Whether it is a sin, you know, whether it's all the sins that we can have, and we can list hundreds of sins, whether it's little sins or big sins, or whether it's fighting um, a disease in our life, or challenges of uh, prejudice against us, or spirits of depression, whatever, Every, pornography, lust, and adultery. You know, there's, there's Christians that have committed adultery. It doesn't mean they're not a Christian, but they sinned in a great way. Well, God gives them victory against that. Or, or God gives them victory against depression. We should not now judge someone, another person, and judge them because God sees us. We're not. We should comfort them. And the Bible says we should... Our brothers and sisters in Christ especially, when we comfort them, don't Join their sin and don't say their sin's okay, but we should gently help them. And the whole point of this message is the specific sins or diseases or challenges or problems we've had in life. Sometimes people lose five relatives in a few months, three years later, they haven't recovered. It just seems to be too much for them. But God will hold you through that. I've seen Christians lose two year old children, and for a mother and a father to lose. People, many people never recover from that. Never fully recover. But I've seen Christians fully recover and not feel guilty for having a joyful life. Because I knew that little child was okay. And God did not design them to be grieving for 20 years or to, re, or to, to turn to alcohol or drugs or depression. So everyone, as a Christian, the victories you've had in life, that's what this message is. The victories that you've had, God is especially especially molded you in your life that when you were given victory over the problems in your life and the challenges and you were given victory over that through God's power and love through the Holy Spirit through Jesus when you were given victory you, we should comfort other people especially comfort other people that struggle with those same problems because you've been specially equipped this is so big. You've been specially, specially equipped to deal with that issue. You know, if you've battled depression. You know, I, I used to battle it. Not consistently, but enough where I was ready to kill myself. That's pretty serious. A long time ago. But even now, once about a spirit of depression, will attack me just a little bit. A little bit. But I, I know it. My guard's up. My arm is on. My guard's up. I'm alert. Right at that moment, spirit of depression. I command you in the name of Jesus to leave me now. Don't return. Boom. Done. We got that power. Um, so we are so special. Like that. Let's say you suffer from depression. Many Christians do. And you know, I that's kind of crazy, right? We got Jesus and power, the Holy Spirit, and, and and God's spirit is stronger than any spirit out there. Yet we let the spirit of depression get a hold of us, and we take medication for it. We can have victory. So let's say you victory over that. You are specially equipped. Not that a, I mean, a, a Christian that hasn't had depression could obviously pray for somebody, comfort somebody that's in depression. depression. But the person that's suffered from depression or suffered from lust or suffered from fear to the, fear and anxiety to the point where you would get sick, nauseous and vomit, 
we are specially, you are specially equipped to help those people. Think about how you've had your training. And you're especially, you're, you're equipped in a way that no one else is because you've been there. And you understand it, you know, as an ex-drug addict, I know the workings of the enemy of the devil and addiction in people's lives. I know a lot of the things that would give the devil a stronghold in people's lives and how it works. Not that you have to know that to have victory and pray for people, but it, it gives you a special, you're specially designed, specially equipped, specially trained. Because of the victory that you had in that area. Princeton or, or Yale or, or college for that. But what you've got is invaluable. You can study psychiatry and all this stuff, theology. I mean, you can study, 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 but not be so well equipped as you are right now because you went through these problems and you had victory over these problems and you were delivered from these problems through the power of God. And there's no better training. It's really today's message. Um, James chapter 1, um, 2 and 4, 2 through 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. But you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete and need nothing. If I want to read a little more. If you need wisdom, ask God generous God who will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Trust and faith here. Without trust and faith. How are we going to... Hi, John. Hello. Without strong trust and faith, how are we going to be like the others? How are we going to offer the same comfort to people that God's given us that we start losing our faith in it? That we start not remembering all the things God's done for us because we're going for our own stuff. We went through these things. We are equipped to comfort other people. But we need to keep our faith strong, our trust strong. And how do we need no, we need to, yeah, how do we do that? No, we don't have the power to do that. But we do have the power go to God because faith originally at the very beginning was a gift from God. God. I always say to people if you want more faith, pray to God. On your knees, face the, the ground, ground, lying down, hanging out in a chair, having a coffee, any way you want. Speak to God. Speak to God. And ask God please God give me more faith. Like the man with the demon son. Yes, I believe. Jesus, yes, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. There's a, many of us Christians... So as we comfort others, we need to comfort with strong faith and trust in the Lord. Yeah, I sold cars a long time ago. You know, and I was an honest car salesman. And man, if I liked a car and believed in a car, it sure came across to people. I sold boats too. And if I enjoyed that boat and I liked that boat, man, I sold, I sold more of those because people... They believed in me because I had passion for it. I had trust in it. This was a good item. I believed in it. This was a good item. Well, if you trust and believe in God and remember the comfort that he's given you, you will be well, very well equipped to pass that comfort on to other people. What a beautiful... What a beautiful place to be. Especially some of us have been going through some things now in life new challenges, not even old ones, new ones. What a beautiful place to be that even though we're going through stuff, to be able to comfort somebody in depression because we had victory from that, or to comfort somebody from fear because we had victory in that, or to comfort somebody who's got cancer because we had victory through that, or comfort somebody who's going through divorce because we had victory in a, in a marital situation or in a hurt. There's so many places in life that we suffer and God gets us through. He holds us up and he comforts us so that we are equipped to comfort others. What a beautiful place to be. I don't know about you all. Well, I should say this. 
every day, but well, <laughs> Tuesday when I go to, when we go to Atlanta, our team, and we do street ministry in, in a poor neighborhood. It's the happiest day of my week. Not so I can get stripes, or God does this to me for doing good, no. I, I'm, so, I'm so, I feel so good inside. Comforting other people and so often in areas of their life that I had the same issues in my life that I've had victory over. So I could tell them the story and say, I have victory over this from God. You can have that victory. And we have a lot of people, uh, Mike, Barbara, um, Rick, myself, whoever else goes with us, they, they, they believe in what we're telling them, showing them. And they come, we don't have to ask people, would you like prayer? Very rarely, sometimes, typically, and people just ask us, would you pray for me? Against drugs, against violence, against relationship problems, and for a place to live, for a job. It's just amazing. I got off on a tangent over here, kind of. One, and I got to go, but one more, um, one more thing as we comfort others. First of all, faith. Trust in God, yes. But also in the way that we do it. If you're go off half wrong, you know, you, okay, I got the faith. I know what God did for me. I can speak to somebody. Yes, I can speak against this problem because I had it and I was delivered from it. I had an anger issue and I was delivered from it for the power of God and I haven't gone back. I'm good from this. Let me pray for you and I'm going to comfort you because. I've been there, and now I'm free of it, and I want you to have this, and God wants you to have this, and he's going to use me to help you here, hold your hand. Okay, that's all good. But if you go in like that, with an unforgiving attitude, it's it's not going to work so good. You can go in like, yeah, I'm going to help you with this, but if you got a condemnation, and a lot of believers do that, a lot of believers, they got part of it right, but they still don't have forgiveness in their heart. And you know, when in, in Matthew chapter 18, 18 verse 21, 22, Peter was asking Jesus, how many times do I forgive somebody? Seven times? And what did Jesus, our Lord, say? God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. What did he say? He says, no. Not seven times. Seven times, 70 times you forgive. So, don't give up on people. And that doesn't mean, Jesus doesn't say, except... Accept what I did against you. He didn't say be an enabler and just go, oh, I forgive you. Go do it again. No, no, no. There's consequences. But he says to forgive. Seven times 70, seven, seven times 70 times. So as we are coming to others, we have to have that sincere, loving, forgiving heart has to be real. And God will use us much more powerfully to comfort people. He has us here for this. There's a reason. It's for the good of the whole body. You know, God gives us gifts. That's what the, the Bible and Corinthians. Apostle Paul speaks that this is for the good of the body. We're given the Holy Spirit. Yes, for, to guide us, to help us. But the main reason we're given the Holy Spirit is to give us the boldness, the direction to tell people about Jesus. God doesn't need us, but he uses us to bring people into the kingdom. His, His Holy Spirit, Spirit working in us speaks to people. He uses our mouth to speak. And our eyes, our actions to speak to people about Jesus. His Holy Spirit brings them in. He also uses us to comfort people. Let me tell you something. Being an ambassador of Christ. Nothing beats it. I'm going to go now because I've got to run. We're going to have our church service. Anybody locally? One o'clock, one forty, one forty, Cornerstone Drive off Camp Road, and uh, I've got to get there. Thank you all for being here. God bless you. And uh, check us out. If you don't know us, Double and Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries. Dot org. And we have my messages and other other people in our ministry on uh, and TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. God bless you all. Be a comfort to others. Not just in things that you've gone through, but just in general. Especially you're equipped. In certain areas, because of your life, you're especially equipped and trained to help people have victory, the same victory that you've been given by the power of God.
Is that cool or what? Great message. I mean, thank you, Lord. God bless you all. I love you. More important, 